In this video, we're going to be talking about tables inside of Microsoft PowerPoint 2016. Now, a table can be added to any slide of your presentation by going to the Insert tab and looking for the table section where the only item above it is going to be Table, which you can click to get a drop down menu to add a table of any number of rows and columns. As you can see, when you use this grid to add a table, it quickly adds in a default table that even has headers and a style already applied to it, though you can also use the options down below, insert table and draw a table if you want to make a very specific size for your table. You even have the option of adding in an Excel spreadsheet as a table within PowerPoint. For both of these, you can put any number between 1 and 75. So you could technically have a table with 75 columns and 75 rows, though that's probably overkill for most purposes. In this case, we'll just make a 5x5 five five table. To quickly demonstrate the difference between draw table and insert table, we'll use draw table as well. So down here, we're going to draw, literally, the entire frame of our table. When you do this, it will only give you one row and one column. This is the equivalent of having a text box right here. Though if we click over here on the layout tab of table tools at the top, which is only visible when you currently have a table selected, we can insert rows and we can also insert columns. If you want a row, click on insert above or insert below. And if you want a new column, hit insert left or insert right. So we'll add in a new row below, and we'll also add a column to the right. Now you'll notice that when we insert a new row below, it took the height of the original table cell and just doubled that down below. So it has the same height, but when we added a new column, it instead splits the width in half. And if we keep hitting insert right, it's going to split it into threes, into fourths, and so on. And you can see at the bottom of this slide here that the table is actually going off the edge. And that's largely because our cell height is very large. So what we can do here is drag this table up. Then we can decrease the cell size from 1.8 inches to something lower like 0.5 inches. And that will make our table a lot more manageable. And it would also allow us to add in more rows and still have this displaying on the same slide. It is important to note though that you don't have to have every single row or column be the exact same size. When you hover over the borders of each cell, you can see a little icon which demonstrates that you can left click and drag it up or down. And that's the borders specifically that I'm talking about. So you could have the header be larger than any other cell. Or you could take one of the columns, such as the first one, and increase the width so that it could fit all of the text which you might have located inside one of these cells. If you ever customize the positions of your cell borders and you want to turn it all back to normal where each cell has the same height and the same width, you can simply select all of your cells by left click and dragging and go to distribute rows and distribute columns, clicking on each of those will make evenly spaced rows and evenly spaced columns respectively. For instance, if I adjusted the first row to be taller than any other cell, and I also took the third cell, expanded the border to make it taller than the other cells as well, but I only wanted to reset the first two rows to be even, I would just select the first two rows or even the first two cells in the first column and first two rows, and just go to distribute rows. And you can see that the third row has been left completely alone. It's still taller than any of the other rows in this table. Just like regular text boxes, you also have alignment tools, including align left, center, and right. And you can also set the positioning of the text vertically by doing align top, align center, and align bottom. For instance, if we go ahead here and type in center, for text and we want to actually center that vertically, we could just click here to center it vertically. If you'd like for the text to be displayed on its side, you can click on text direction and select vertical or rotate all text 90 degrees to change its orientation. You're probably familiar with margins at this point as the edge of a slide that you're not allowed to put any text on, or in this case, the edge of a cell, which serves as a divider between your text 
and the border itself. So if we want to increase that space here, it looks like about 0 0.05 inches right there. We can click on cell margins and select a option from this list, such as wide, to give it more space. Now, it did kind of mess with our word here, but you can see that it did, in fact, add about 0 0.1 extra inch here on each side so that it prevents us from having the text appear there. Of course, if you want custom cell margins, you just have to click on the cell margin dropdown and go to custom margins at the bottom and you can set whatever you want for each of the four sides of a cell or the entire table if you select the entire table when you're clicking on this menu. If you'd like to select the entire table at once, you need to only have the table selected, have your cursor anywhere in the table. And then you can go up to table size where you can change the height and the width. If you lock the aspect ratio, then whenever you change the height, it's going to adjust the width proportionally and vice versa if you adjust the width instead. So let's go ahead and do that and shrink it down by about 20% here. And you can see that when we resize the table, it also adjusts the size of all of the rows and all of the columns. So everything is scaled proportionally. When you work in PowerPoint 2016, you're generally not going to have just one item on a slide. You may also have a title box over here, or maybe even a subtext box down here. Now, uh, each of those elements are going to have a certain priority in showing first on the page. When you have two text boxes or tables overlapping each other, one will be in front and the other will be behind and the one in front is going to show its text over the one that's behind. Now, generally, you don't want to have text overlapping, but this also does apply to elements such as photographs, and you may actually want text to appear in front of a photograph. This can all be managed with the Arrange section. So if we take our text here in each of these cells and make it the same, I'll just copy and paste it a bunch, and we move this over our little uh, tables title here. You can kind of see that the white text is overlapping with the blue, but to make it easier on you, I'll go ahead and change the font color over to a, uh, it appears we have multiple uh, items selected. I don't want to change the blue. Okay, so we're going to deselect that, only have the table selected and go to black when we actually have the cell selected as well. And there we go. Now we can actually see the black text over the blue text of the title. And the reason it's showing in front is because on the arrange section and layout, it is actually in front. Now, if we send this backwards, it's going to start prioritizing this table less over the other elements on our slide. Now you can see all the elements by opening up the selection pane. And you can see that this table, which is by default titled table eight is in front right now. If we send it backwards, it's going to go down one level and be under prioritized over the second table, table seven. And if we send it to the back, it's actually going to appear at the bottom of the list. So let's go ahead and send it backwards right now. And now if we drag this table over this other table here, table seven, it's actually going to disappear everything because it's appearing behind the table because table seven is prioritized. If we send this to the back, then everything is going to be prioritized in front of this table. So you can see that the table's title is now in front of our text. And if we move this over the PowerPoint 2016 subtitle, we can also see that table eight is now behind all that. Likewise, if we bring this to the front and put it above everything, then this will show in front of anything else we have displaying on our slide. Now, just like any other text box within PowerPoint 2016, you can, of course, go to the Home tab and Font and Paragraph in order to align the text, change it, bolden it, etc. But let's say you actually want to align the entire table to part of the slide. You do that back on the layout of Table Tools. And with Align, you can align left to move the entire table to the left edge of your slide. Or you could align it vertically, let's say in the exact center, vertically speaking. Let's quickly talk about selecting rows, cells, and columns within a PowerPoint table. You can select a column by clicking above the column, right above the entire table, and that will select the entire column right below it. Likewise, if you click over here to the left, 
then you're going to be selecting each row individually. And if you hold the shift button down, you can add extra rows or columns to what you currently have selected. If you want to select a specific cell, you need only click on the top left hand corner of that cell. But if we hold shift and left click down here on a future cell, such as row two, column two, you'll notice that it actually selects all four of these cells rather than just the two I actually clicked on. And this has the same selection functionality as Excel. It is really dragging a rectangle between our starting point and all of the other cells between that. And that includes every row and every column up to this new point that we have selected. So if I click on the fourth row and fourth cell, it's going to do the same thing. So we really have 16 cells selected here. If you want to split up a cell into two or more cells, you can simply do that by selecting a cell and going to the split cells button. You'll also find this by right clicking and getting the drop down menu split cells is at the bottom. So if we hit split cell right here, it's going to ask us how many cells or how many columns and how many rows that we actually want to split this into. So if we have two columns, then it's going to split it down the middle and it's going to create two cells out of the one original cell. If we have two columns and two rows, it's going to split it into four pieces evenly distributed and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and click OK here. Uh, since it's two rows, it splits it horizontally and vertically to create those four different cells. If you want to undo that and make it one normal cell again, all you need to do is select all of these cells and hit merge cells. Now you can also do that with cells that you didn't even split up. So if you wanted to take these two cells, you can merge those as well into one single cell. Now lastly, we're going to talk about the design tab of table tools. Here you have table style options, table styles, word art styles, and the ability to draw borders on each of your cells or the entire table. When you have header row checked, that's what you see up here at the top. It is a header. It is the top piece, which you usually use as titles for each of the rows below it. A total row is more or less the opposite, where at the very bottom, it's going to add another row that you would usually use for totaling up numbers. And it will also highlight it in a similar way to the header row. However, you don't need to use it for totaling numbers. Uh, that's just generally what it's used for. Now, what banded rows are is when you have multiple rows in a table, each row is going to alternate between a different color. Although they're similar colors, you can see that the kind of beige color on this first row is a lot darker than the second row. And then on the second row, it's lighter. And on the third row, it's darker again. And if we add in more rows, what's actually going to happen is it's going to keep following that same pattern where it goes dark, light, dark, light, dark. So if we turn off banded rows on the table style options, it's going to disable that each row is going to look the exact same. However, banded rows are actually a really cool idea because it makes your text in each of the cells easier to read. Now, just like having a header and total row to indicate that you have something different going on at the top of your table or the bottom of your table, like totaling up information or adding titles at each of the uh, top of the columns, you can put the exact same effect on the first column and the last column as well to have those same kind of details. So you could do titles on the top row, but you could also do that on the first column as well. It's really up to you on how you want to present your table. Banded columns is the exact same effect as banded rows, except you're reversing the direction. So if we click here, it's going to start alternating the colors between our columns. So right here is actually a light beige column. And then this one is a dark beige. If we turn off banded rows, you'll be able to see this better. Generally speaking, you wouldn't use banded rows and banded columns in conjunction. It's one of those things that you choose one or the other. Over here on table styles, you can see that you actually have a lot of different colors to choose from when creating your tables. So you could have basically the exact same layout, but make it pink instead or more of a reddish color. And you can also scroll down and see that there are other options that are very different. For instance, the second row of styles may be much more useful when you actually need to do a totaling row because you notice that the difference is that it actually adds borders on the very last row to indicate that that row is different, it's a totaling row, it's supposed to have some kind of summary information there or whatever you actually want to put there. 
The third row of default table styles has very thick borders, as you can see here. The next row down has a set of table styles that more or less remove the borders from each individual cell. So if we actually click outside the table, you can see that the cells themselves don't have the borders. Only the header row and the total row have a border. So on and so forth. You get the idea that there's a lot of different table styles. If you click on this little button right here in the bottom right hand corner, the more button, you can see that there's a whole lot of different options and you can just use this to find exactly what you want without having to navigate between each row individually. If you want to remove all of the styling, you can just click on clear table here at the bottom, which will leave you with a table that has no background, but does have a black border between each cell. Of course, like anything else you can style within PowerPoint 2016, you can customize this using shading for the cell background. You can use borders to set which sides of a cell or which sides of the entire table you actually want to have borders on. So outside borders is going to add a border only to the table itself. If we include inside borders, then each cell is going to have a border with the other cells. You can customize each cell or each row or column individually by simply having it selected when you go up here to borders. So we could remove all the bordering from this cell by clicking on no borders. But you see that only applies to this specific cell, not the other ones around it or the entire table. And you do have the option to apply different special effects to the table or any individual cell. For instance, if you want to make it have a more 3D effect, you can use the cell bevel, which is similar to a word art text bevel and make it stand out a bit. Likewise, you have shadow options and the ability to reflect cells at the table uh, down here below. I'm not sure why you'd actually want to do that, but it's there if you want it. Now, just like outside of a table, you can also play around with word art styling with text on your table. So if we want to go ahead and add, say, a glow, we can do that just like in a text box. And you also have the quick styling drop down menu if you want to use some of the default options instead. The last option here, draw borders with the design tab, is a little bit differently than just clicking on a cell and adding some borders to it. Because when you actually delete a border with the eraser tool, what's going to happen is that this cell over here is going to immediately merge with the one to the left of it. So if I erase this border, then this has actually just become one single cell immediately. And likewise, if I use draw table, I can split any cell into two cells. And you can also do the same thing horizontally. So if I draw here, it's going to add an extra row. Now all of our rows do have the same height, so it expanded the table to reflect that. Now one interesting thing you can do is you can actually port a slash through a cell by using draw table, clicking on the top left corner area, and then dragging to the bottom right hand corner area. Now this doesn't actually split it into two different cells, it only puts a line through it. With any of these borders that you're drawing, you have the ability to change the type of border. You don't have to have a solid line, it can be dotted or dashed. You can change the thickness of the border from one point to a lower, like a quarter of a point, or higher, like three points. And you can also change the color of the line from black or white to anything else you want. Just to demonstrate how that changes things, I'll draw another vertical line over here, similar to the one we drew in the cell to the right of it. Now you don't have to create all new borders with this tool. You can also overwrite old borders. So if I drag over that, it didn't create a new one, but it did change the formatting of our old borders. So that's just about everything there is to tables within PowerPoint 2016. They've certainly added a lot of very nice features to make it very easy to make great looking tables. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.